everybody, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com and today we're going to do a little look at the week series about Steve I tapped 7th arpeggios. Um, so this is a technique I've seen him use in uh, quite a few songs and live improvisations and I think it's really kind of a uh, really cool little sound. So it's going to require not only tapping in the right hand but it's going to require some hammer-ons uh, onto adjacent strings down here um, in the left hand. So let's get right into it. You'll be able to find the tab PDF of this at guitarlessons365.com. Just look in the uh, video description and you'll see the uh, tab download there. Um, so we're going to start here. Um, we're going to start with an A major 7th arpeggio. Um, now this is going to be, uh, an A major 7th arpeggio is an A, C sharp, E, and G sharp. So I'm going to tap this G sharp on the 6th string. I'm sorry, the first string at the 16th fret. Then I'm going to pull off to the 12th fret on the same string, that's an E, and then pull off to the 9th fret, which is the C sharp. So we have those three notes. Now to get the other notes in the arpeggio, he goes over to the adjacent string and he hammers on, in this case, onto the A at the 10th fret on the B string and then we're going to add this little pull off the hammer back on on the second string you're pulling off actually to G sharp the same note an octave lower that we tapped up here which makes the seventh of the arpeggio then he comes back to this um, 10th fret then back over to the first string hammering on with your first finger onto the 9 12 and just go back up the way you the opposite the way you came so we have then I just took the melody note in this little uh, phrase I did at the beginning take that up one fret which is now from the G sharp to the A so you kind of resolve that melody note up back to the A but this is still going to be, even though we've moved this to an A, it's still a major 7th arpeggio since we still have the G sharp down here at the 9th fret on the B string. So we go from here. Alright, so this is the shape that you'll see him use a lot. He, he loves this little... He likes that little, the, the little tension that creates change in that melody note on top. And underneath it, he's just, just doing this um, little tapping motive. So just get that pattern down. And make sure you get these two notes down here on this string. And when you come back, hammering on with that first finger is kind of sometimes a little bit difficult. All right, just to let you guys know, as I go through these, the bottom of my palm here is muting the strings. I'm kind of laying on the strings down here. Um, so when I'm tapping, so that's how I'm keeping it quiet, all the other strings down here. And as I come across the strings here with these other sets, anything that's beneath the strings that I'm playing, like the strings beneath, like the, the higher pitch strings, are being muted by the bottom of my first finger down here. All right, so that's going to come into play this next shape where we're coming over to the second and third strings. We're going to do kind of the same pattern, just a little bit different fingerings. And we're going to take, um, so we got... So then we're going to do this E9, it's an E major add 9 arpeggio at first, okay? So all that basically is this, we have E, pull off to B, pull off to G sharp, and here we're going to hammer on F sharp on the third string, then pull off to uh, the E down below, the root note. So this F sharp is going to be the ninth. So since we don't have a seventh in here, it's going to be an add 9 chord, so we have our arpeggio. It has a cool kind of floating quality. Then I'm going to take the melody note and move it down a half step. So now we have that 7th note. So an E major 7th chord is, um, is E, G sharp, B, D sharp, and we're adding that F sharp as the ninth. So now we have a full major 9 arpeggio. So. Alright, then I come over to here to the 3rd and 4th strings 
you can take these shapes anywhere you want. Now the shapes are going to be back similar like they were on the first and second since the tuning between these two strings is the same, a perfect fourth. So we have here, we're going to have a C major seventh arpeggio. We have the C major seventh chord uh, is a C, E, G, and B. So those are the notes of the arpeggio. We have a B tapped, the 16th fret on the third string, pull off to 12, 9, hammer on 10 on the fourth string, do that half step pull off down to the B again, the seventh, back up, and we're on the third string. So we're doing the same pattern every time. Then I'm going to resolve the seventh back up to the C. So now we have a C on top, but still a C major seventh arpeggio. Then I'm going to come down to this B. Now we have a B major arpeggio, B major seventh arpeggio, I'm sorry. Then I took the first finger and went down one fret. So now we have that A sharp, a B, um, a B major seventh arpeggio is uh, a B, D sharp, F sharp, and an A sharp. So I'm counting this A sharp here. Then I just ended it resolving it to that B. All right, so just take this and you, you can see how you can create so many cool arpeggios. You can just go all around the neck. You can uh, not only play these, you can create different type of arpeggios if you know how to spell your chords a little bit. If you don't, um, go to the theory archives uh, at guitarlessons365.com and you can learn a lot how to spell chords and, and figure this stuff out on your own. Say we have this major seventh arpeggio. The only difference between a major seventh arpeggio and a dominant seventh arpeggio is that instead of a major seventh interval in it, which is a G in the key of A, well, it's now a G natural. So if we took the same notes, but instead of hitting G sharps, we always hit Gs. We now have a, a dominant arpeggio. So you can get a lot of mileage out of these shapes and um, they sound really cool and just sound like these blurs of notes that create um, really any kind of chord quality you want. We did sevenths, we did ninths. Um, so have fun with it. Please go to guitarlessons365.com. Uh, let me know what kind of lessons you would like to see and please support the site in any way you can. I really appreciate it. It's what keeps these lessons coming. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.